Hello everyone, this is Matt from Real World Review, and today we're going to replace a screen on the Moto Edge Plus. This will work for the Moto Edge, but the disassembly might be a little bit different. But either way, the tools that you're going to need are going to be a Torx 4 bit, a plastic pick for prying, a razor blade, a playing card, and some heat as well as some adhesive, glue, and obviously some clamps. So the first thing you're going to do is heat up the back. Just get a decent amount of heat on there because the phone is not water resistant, but it does have some padding to help with that. So you do want to add a decent amount of heat. And pretty much what you want to do is use that razor blade to kind of lift up the back just a little bit so then you can get a playing card in there and cut through the adhesive on the right side and work on the bottom areas, staying away from the camera first. As the adhesive loosens up, then you can focus on the camera area, making sure to add a little bit of heat, but not too much because you don't want to melt those cameras. And then the back should come off fairly easily, it shouldn't be too difficult. And then after that, what we can do is remove all the adhesive on the back glass. This shouldn't really take too much time. Plus, if it's still hot, it shouldn't be too difficult. And then I'm just going to do the same thing on the back. You can do this later if you want to, or you can do it now, whichever works for you. I chose to do it right now. Then what we're going to do is grab that T4 driver, that Torx 4 bit, and we're going to remove all the screws that we can see on the top portion. Once all those screws are removed, we can lift up this little plastic piece starting with the bottom and just lift it up towards the top should come out fairly easily. Then the next thing we want to do is we're going to actually remove the logic board. Technically you don't need to do this, but it does make it a lot easier for installing the screen if you do this. So what we're going to do is we're going to unplug these cables on the bottom. And what I tried to do is I tried to remove the battery and you don't actually have to remove the battery, which is a good thing. So you can ignore that. But pretty much all you're going to do is unplug all these cables and very carefully lift up the logic board. Don't forget about the cable on the left side and the antenna cables because those are pretty fragile and you don't want to break those. Also with that T4 bit, you got to remove the screw on the top and then this one that's kind of hiding on the bottom. So once all the cables are lifted up, the two on the top, the one on the left side, the two cables on the bottom and the battery plug, then you can lift up the logic board starting with the bottom area and honestly it should come out fairly easily. Next, what we're going to do is we're going to remove the screen. So this is kind of pressed in, so you don't technically have to add too much heat or really any heat. Plus, the display that's on here is already broken, so I'm not going to refurbish it or anything like that. Plus, it would be very difficult to save it anyway. But pretty much what you want to do, you can add some heat if you want to. But I recommend starting with the bottom, getting a pick in there, possibly using a razor blade to lift up the screen. But you want to get a pick in there so you can cut through this adhesive and it kind of pops up. It's not like normal adhesive. Though it is somewhat sticky, the way that it gets removed, it kind of just pops up. It's very strange. But you can use a little bit of heat to loosen up that adhesive and just go around with a pick or razor blade and kind of lift up that screen like I'm doing right now. And then stay with the pick whenever you're cutting through the adhesive. Don't use a razor blade. But the main focuses are focusing on the left and right side. And once you cut through that adhesive, it should kind of just fall out. And make sure the cable kind of feeds through so it doesn't get caught. After that, we're going to start removing this adhesive, which feels kind of weird and is kind of difficult to remove, but feel free to use some heat. It kind of helps, not too much, but it does kind of just fall apart. And once you clean all that up, you want to clean up the bottom parts and the top part too. Now the next step that we're going to do is we're going to test the display, which kind of is difficult to do because it does do some weird stuff sometimes if it's not set down properly. but I want to make sure at least the screen shows up. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put the screen in 
and I'm going to move all these cables so I can set the logic board back in place, which is kind of a pain to do, but it does power on. It looks like everything's working and the touchscreen's working, so we're going to power this back off, and we're going to fold the screen over like this. There's really no reason to unplug it, but if you want to be very careful and not damage the screen, you can unplug it, but this does make the install process slightly difficult. But make sure that everything on the logic board looks fine, make sure it's all plugged in except for the battery. Then what we're going to do is we're going to grab some adhesive and apply some around the sides where that screen was. And I recommend just going on the sides, don't go on the top or the bottom. And what we're going to do after that is we are going to use glue to glue the bottom, the top, and the sides. So make sure that looks nice, peel off anything that's on the back of the screen, because you do want to make sure that fingerprint scanner even has a chance to possibly work which it will still work if you do set the screen down properly. Let's set it down and kind of line up on the top and line up on the bottom. It's kind of difficult to get those edges down perfectly, but it will kind of set down and you can feel on the edges if the screen's over too much or too little. If it's over too much, you might want to add some heat and lift up the screen very carefully because you don't obviously want to break the screen, but make sure to set it down properly so you don't have to worry about that. Now if everything's not already plugged in on the logic board, make sure to do that. And then we're going to put this plastic piece in, clipping in on the top and then setting it down on the bottom. Then you can put the screws in, but I was going a little bit slow, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put this in the clamps so that I can let the screen set so we don't have to worry about the glue loosening up as we put the foam back together. So really, you only need three points of contact on each side, but just in case, I put three clamps and two metal clamps on each side. What you wanna do is let this sit for about an hour to an hour and a half, if not longer, if you can, then what you're going to do is take off those clamps, and if you already haven't, put in all those T4 screws back in place, and then grab some adhesive so we can apply it on the sides. We're going to apply it like this, however the back glass might still lift, so I do recommend using glue around the edges like we did with the screen, so then you don't have to worry about it lifting, especially at the camera area, I've seen that happen a few times. But once you put the glue on, you can set down the back, and then you can put them back in the clamps like we did with the screen, and let that sit for a while. But pretty much once that's done sitting, you can go through and clean up all the adhesive that you see that kind of leaked out on the edges. And then you want to test the phone to make sure it works. And if it is, you're all set. Hopefully this video helped you out. The socials are listed above. And as always, thanks for watching.